Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather and I've been a reseller on eBay since 2006 and Amazon since 2019. This is my 2021 profit breakdown video. We're gonna go into how much I made gross on every platform, how much I made net. We're gonna go into what sort of stores I found my items in by platform broken down by percentage. This is gonna be a very data heavy video, so buckle up. We're gonna start with Etsy. I started my Etsy store in 2015 um, and I sort of went full time with it in 2018, 2019, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life exactly. And my Etsy is not reselling related at all, but I do make enough profit off of it that I felt it was appropriate to um, add to this video. Right now, Etsy is mostly in the background. I don't do anything with it. Like I don't really make new designs for it. I just sort of fulfill the stuff that I already have there. So if I'm not reselling, what is in my store? So right now it's mostly print on demand shirts. So it's similar to a merch by Amazon or Redbubble, that sort of thing. Except unlike those two platforms, I have to make the listings myself, I make all the mock-ups, and I provide all the customer service. The only thing I don't do is print the design on a shirt and ship it. That's the print-on-demand aspect, an outside company does that part for me. I used to do a lot more hands-on stuff with my store. I used to do like heat transfer vinyl and press my own shirts at home, but when you're just one person, you really can't scale doing that. So as my Amazon grew in 2019, I had to let a lot of the stuff on Etsy go. I come up with and make all of my own designs in Adobe Illustrator. That's always sort of been a fun side hobby for me. And I get asked this question a lot. Why don't I ever show off or link my Etsy store to anybody? And there's a great answer for that. Number one is unlike reselling where you're kind of at the mercy of what you find around you. Like I can say, here's some specific dolls to look for. Here's this to look for. And you may or may not find it. With Etsy, if I say, look at this design I made, you know, it's a great idea and I sold a thousand of them this year. There's literally nothing stopping somebody from coming in, doing their own take on that design and sort of eroding my market share. I've had to file my fair share of DMCA notices on like exact tracing copycats of some of my best designs and also I have to just put up with legally distinct knockoffs. So yeah, I'm not really keen on opening the floodgates to people coming in and seeing what I'm all about and then sort of stealing my ideas. And number two is that um, when you link your store like that, you get a lot of looky-loos, but not a lot of sales. And that's gonna hurt my conversion rate. So I'm not hiding anything sinister. There's nothing weird going on with my store. It's purely a business decision. All right, so let's break it down. Etsy accounted for just 9.4% of my gross revenue. And my revenue on Etsy for 2021 was, let me look at my paper, $18,287. As my focus shifted to Amazon, a lot of the stuff I used to make on Etsy, I had to let go. And so my sales are actually down 27% on Etsy. But the rise in Amazon more than made up for it. I had a total of 1,055 orders with 1,148 items because some of those orders, they ordered multiple things. That breaks down to about three items per day on Etsy. And while I let go a lot of my homemade products and moved to print on demand, there are still some things that I make at home, including one decal that sells just crazy good. I was surprised to see that it's still mostly an even split. I had 46% of my sales on Etsy come from my print on demand products and 54% of my sales still coming from my homemade products. First, we're gonna look at profit margin, which is a measure of how much of that gross sales that I actually get to keep. That averaged around 67% for my homemade products and 34% for my print on demand products. And that makes total sense because my homemade products at this point are mostly decals. And if we're talking about a standard like 12 by 12 sheet of vinyl, even though I buy my vinyl in rolls, um, you spend about $1.50 for just one sheet of vinyl. And I can get 16 of my best-selling decals off of one sheet. And I sell each of those for $6. So that's $96 worth of revenue off of something I paid $1.50 for. And with print-on-demand, 34% is still pretty good considering I'm just providing the customer service aspect and I'm not actually like making or shipping the product. I make the art once and then sort of set it and forget it. I think my print-on-demand shirts are as close to passive income as I'm gonna get. 
And I'm sure that could be improved. I use higher quality shirts and I use Printful, which is one of the more expensive print-on-demand companies. And after all my shipping and fees, my take-home profit on Etsy was $7,579, which makes an all-around profit margin of 41.5%. And I had zero returns on Etsy. Etsy customers will give you a chance to fix things without involving Etsy. So in my six, seven years on the platform, I've had no cases opened against me. Knock on wood. The downside is Etsy customers can be kind of needy. They ask a lot of questions before buying something. They'll ask for custom artwork. They'll ask, can you change this, this, or this about this particular design? And I used to accommodate them all. I used to go way out of my way to make sure everyone was happy. And oh yeah, I'll do all this work for free. And um, it's a bad idea. You know, I want to make everyone happy. I don't want to disappoint anyone. But I learned there's power in saying no. And I said no a lot this year. And it felt really good. Now we're gonna move on to eBay. eBay had 34.2% of my gross revenue. I sold a total of 1,663 items for an average of four or five items shipped per day. I tend to only have 400 to 450 items in my store at any given time, so I don't have like a huge 1,000 item store or anything. Um, I tend to keep it kind of small. Let's dive into what fueled that. I'm gonna break down my eBay and subsequently Amazon sales by what stores I bought the inventory from. Because I think it's helpful to see where I'm getting my inventory, and you'll be surprised that it's not all thrift. First, we have drug stores. Drug stores can be nationwide chains like CVS, Rite Aid, and Walgreens. They can be small local um, pharmacy chains, or they can be just one-off mom and pop pharmacies. Anything that builds itself as a pharmacy or drugstore I count it as a drugstore. 19% of my eBay sales came from this type of store. Next we have grocery, which is the local kind of grocery chain. So your Publix, your Wegmans, your Food Lion, Giant Eagle, Acme, those kind of things. Nothing nationwide like Walmart. That type of store accounted for 3.8% of my eBay sales. Next is one of my favorites, liquidation. I get asked a lot, like, what is a liquidation store? Liquidation stores are going to be small, local, one-off kind of places. They're the kind of places that are buying truckloads of um, inventory for pennies on the dollar. You're getting Amazon return pallets. You're getting shelf pulls for old merchandise. You're getting um, Amazon, not just returns, but like, stuff that they pull for being expired or inauthentic. All that stuff that Amazon pulls for liquidation gets bought by stores like this. And some of these stores operate as bins stores. So those places that are like, we refill one day a week and then every day the price goes down a little bit and you have to dig through bins of just unsorted crap. And I feel like the bins format is getting really popular so you should be able to find a store like that around you. I like them because it's a lot like thrifting meets retail in that you, you never know exactly what you're going to find. The difference being unlike thrift stores that are usually sort of older or used merchandise, a lot of these liquidation stores will have new um, or open box kind of merchandise. So you're probably not going to find something that's like 20 years old at a liquidator. Liquidation stores were 21.8% of my items sold on eBay. Next up is major retail. So that's gonna be any sort of nationwide chain that's a big box kind of store. So that's your Target, your Walmart. It's also stuff like Ulta, Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere that's um, within reach of most people in this country. That was 3.4% of my eBay items sold. Then we have thrift, which is self-explanatory. That's gonna be your local thrift chains as well as the big guys like Goodwill, Salvation Army, and Savers. That was 42.5% of my eBay items sold. Naturally, the largest chunk of my sales were thrift. Then there's home, which is stuff I pulled out of my home. So that's old clothes, old toys that are no longer being used, stuff that I didn't want to throw out because it still had value. That was 3.6% of my items sold. The people category is next, and that's stuff that I found person to person. So that's garage sales, estate sales, Facebook marketplace. That only accounted for 2.2% of my items sold. I used to be a huge garage sailor before I had kids. I was out there every weekend. But where I live, the climate kind of prohibits us to only having garage sales in the summer, and I don't have childcare in the summer, and my kids don't really want to behave. So garage sailing, not very easy. And although I love a good Facebook Marketplace pickup, it's my own fault for not checking the platform enough. I'm always just forgetting about it. Then we have Discounter, 
which is different from liquidation in that it's not the small local stores, it's the larger chain kind of stores. So that's gonna be Big Lots, um, Gabriel Brothers. We don't have an Ocean State job lot here, but that's another kind of one of those stores. It's also like TJ Maxx and Marshalls, any place that sells sort of off price goods. And then my camera died and I had to take a two hour break to charge it. And when I came back, I completely forgot where I left off. I need to mention that discounter was 2.9% of my items sold. And that thin little line is the other category. That's gonna be things like wholesale, mini marts, stuff I found on the curb. That was only 1.2% of my items sold. If we take that all together, that's a grand total of $66,416. My average selling price was $3,708 and my average profit was $2,159. And the average ROI was 909.36%. But that's taking an average of like 10,000% sales and like really low, you know, 78% sales. If we look at this handy chart, we'll see that the majority of my sales are in the 250 to 500% ROI range with 72.3% of all sales being up to 1000% ROI. Now ROI is a measure of how much I put my dollar to work. If I buy an item for $1 and after shipping and fees and everything, I profit $10, that's 1000% ROI. I try to never dip below 100% ROI if I can help it and I try to shoot for the 200 to 300% range. And by the looks of it, I'm having no trouble reaching that goal. While 21.8% of my sales technically fell below that, um, those are probably larger items that I made more profit on. Because if you think about it, if you make $3 off a $1 item, that's 300% ROI. But if I made $10 off a $10 purchase, that's only 100% ROI, but I made more profit. So there's just different metrics to be aware of. I'm fine with taking a lower profit on items that are smaller and lighter and easier to ship and store, whereas larger items, which I don't tend to do a lot of, I want a bigger slice of the pie. I'm fine with an average profit of $21.59 because I prioritize smalls. I'm completely fine churning smalls because that's what I'm set up to accommodate right now. Right now, all of my eBay inventory fits in 12 totes and one small coat closet. I don't have a storage unit even though I feel like I'm at the point where I kind of need one. 53% of my items cost $5 or less to ship, and if we expand that, 86.6% of my items cost $10 or less to ship. And nearly 75% of my sales were items that I sourced for $5 and under. The smalls, the lights, the cheaps. That's my strategy. And that strategy earned me $37,913 profit for a profit margin of 57%. I had 14 returns on eBay, which is a little over a half a percent of items sold. Most were for not as described, but as we know on eBay, people will say not as described, even though it was accurately described in the listing. It doesn't matter if you say something was missing a piece or this piece was cracked and you have pictures of it, they didn't look at the pictures and they didn't read, they're gonna open up a return saying, not as described. And that was the majority of my returns. Some of my memorable sales were these um, Optimum by Lobob WRW eye drops. I found them for 50 cents at a liquidator and I sold them for $80. I think I found two or three of them. After shipping and fees, I made 67.53 per box for an uh, average ROI of 13,510. And another memorable eBay item sold was my Band de Soleil haul earlier in the year. I found seven of these at a liquidator for $2.50 a piece and I sold them for $300 each. I sold six of them and kept one because I always like to see where the price goes. Profit was up to $255 a box for an ROI of 10,210%. Uh, Do I wish all my eBay sales could be that high ROI and that high profit margin? Absolutely, but those are the exceptions, not the rule. All right, so we're gonna move on to Amazon, which was the biggest chunk of my revenue. I started Amazon at the end of 2019. I spent 2020 sort of getting my ungates and my legs under me, and then 2021, it was just nuts. 54.7% of my items sold were on Amazon, and the gross sales were $106,100. Now, Amazon consists of two parts, one being FBM, which is fulfilled by Merchant, and one being FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. 
FBM is like eBay where I store the items, I package it, and I ship it once a customer buys it. FBA is I get a big box together full of items and I send it to Amazon to store and fulfill. There are pros and cons to both, but I mainly used FBA for like if I found a large quantity of one SKU and I just kind of wanted to send it in. I used FBM for things like medicines with not a lot of time left on the date. I don't like to send stuff with less than six months into FBA. And also sometimes an item is on a shortage and you gotta get in, get out really quick before the shortage is over. And if you send it into FBA, your inventory might not be available for a month or two. So having it self-fulfilled, you can get those orders out a lot quicker. That was 2,426 items FBM and 816 FBA. I analyzed FBA and FBM separately, but in terms of ROI and sourcing locations, I didn't see a whole lot different, so I'm just gonna combine the two for these graphs. The big two accounting for 65.8% of my items sourced were from drugstores and wholesale. Wholesale is finding an item for less than retail if you buy a lot of it at one time, and then I get it shipped to my house. And the reason wholesale was so big in 2021 was I happened to find one dynamite product wholesale, and I was on the listing by myself for most of the year. Unfortunately, that flip is basically dead now. Um, Amazon can be ruthless like that. The second one person sniffs out what you're up to, you know, they go run tell their Discord or their Bolo group, and then everyone floods the listing and the price goes down. That just happens with Amazon. A lot of things end up a race to the bottom especially when it's not discontinued, and if you find the source of the item, you can order an unlimited amount of them. I'm just happy to have rode that wave while I could because I was sourcing the item for $6 and selling it for close to 30. And it was a little teeny tiny light item too, so an amazing flip. Not much coming from discounters, grocery, or major retail. The other category for Amazon is stuff that I got at the thrift, stuff that I got out of my house, and mini marts. For Amazon, you do need receipts or some sort of chain of ownership that proves that what you're selling is not counterfeit. So I don't tend to sell a lot of stuff on Amazon that comes from thrift or home because there's no paper trail. So as you can see, I chose not to do that very often. My average selling price was right around $32 and my average profit was $16.85. That's only slightly lower than eBay. My average ROI was 321.5%. Naturally, that's nowhere near eBay because I tend to pay more for my Amazon items. Only 44.7% of my Amazon items were sourced for $5 or less, which is a huge drop from eBay. My profit margin was 52.3% for a take-home profit of $55,546. That is for both um, FBM and FBA combined. I had 12 FBM returns and 13 FBA returns, so if you add those together, and average them out with the number of items sold, it comes out to very similar to eBay with a little over a half of 1% of items sold. That's really not too bad. A lot of people say Amazon has more returns, but I guess the data shows that that was not true in my case. One of my memorable Amazon flips was this Listerine floss that I bought for $1.50 and sold for $75. Yes, $75 for dental floss. It's a discontinued product. There's nothing like it on the market anymore and people are devoted to it, they will pay up for it. After shipping and fees, I made $58.71 for an ROI of 3,915%. Another memorable Amazon sale was these Neutrogena Triple Moisture Conditioners. I found them for $2.50 at a liquidator and I was selling them for $50. After shipping and fees, I made $36.35 a tube. That's an ROI of 1,454% for a profit margin of 72.71%. Lastly, I'm gonna squeak Bonanza in there. Bonanza is just a mirror of your eBay store that's advertised on Google Shopping. So if you're selling on eBay and you don't have a Bonanza, you really should. I sold 84 items on Bonanza for a total of $3,308. I profited $1,831 for a profit margin of 55.3%. I didn't cross list anywhere else in 2021. That's a big goal of mine for 2022. So I didn't cross list a Facebook Marketplace. I didn't really list anything on Mercari. I didn't list anything on Poshmark. I don't really use those platforms that much. I also have to note, I've made $0 off my Instagram. I know some people got invited to like this beta program where they earn bonuses off their reels. But as far as I know, you have to be invited to that program and I haven't been invited. So I don't earn anything for my posts or reels or anything on Instagram. 
Um, I have been approached a few times to do paid endorsements, either for shouting out somebody's profile, somebody's product, or somebody's Discord. And I've turned every single one of them down. Like one such example, I had somebody offer me $500 to post about their um, Amazon Discord, I think it was, where they post leads and stuff, but they didn't invite me to try it at all. And I don't really know this person, so I said no. My audience's trust is worth more than that. I've also made zero dollars off my YouTube. This channel makes me no money, and if anything, it costs me money. If you didn't know, in order to be monetized on YouTube, you need a thousand subscribers, which I do have, and 4,000 watch hours within a 12 month period. Meaning if I post one 10 minute video per month, each and every one of those videos needs at least 2,000 views. And each of those 2,000 views needs to have watched the entire duration of the video. Right now, I only have one video that has over 2,000 views, let alone another 11. But getting those watch hours in a year becomes easier and easier the more content you make. So eventually, I'm sure I'll get there. But when I do, from what I understand, you don't make that much anyway. So YouTube's never gonna be a big source of my income and it's not something that I'm banking on. I did make $19.27 off my Amazon affiliate links. I am in the Amazon Influencers program where um, if you have any sort of following, you can sign up and Amazon will give you a little storefront and you can select Amazon products to put in your storefront. And if somebody buys the product from your store or with a link that you give them, you get a little change back. The people who buy from those links don't pay more. It's literally just Amazon sort of tipping me for bringing them business. So thank you to anyone who has bought from my supply store. It's only stuff that I personally use and would recommend. So let's zoom out. How much does all of that add up to? In 2021, my gross sales were $194,111 total. My take home profit was $102,869. That makes for a healthy profit margin of 52.9%. Meaning when I show my gross numbers, it's safe to assume I'm taking home about half that. The total number of items sold was 6,139. That means I shipped about 16 or 17 items per day. That's my business, that's how I run it. Everyone's numbers are gonna look a little bit different depending on their strategies. There are certainly way more sellers, especially on Amazon that can put up $100,000 in gross sales in a quarter. Now, do I think that their profit margin and ROI are anywhere near mine? Probably not, but they could end up taking home more money anyway, so it is what it is. At the end of the day, I made a little over $100,000 pulling stuff off store shelves and pulling stuff out of the thrift. That's pretty darn good. Now, of course, there will be other things that pull out of that profit that I have to pay for. That doesn't account for shipping supplies, that doesn't account for subscription fees, you know, I gotta buy insurance. I got to put gas in my car for all these sourcing trips because I live rurally and most of these places are kind of far away. Not to mention Uncle Sam's gonna want his cut. Looking ahead to the future, what do I think is gonna happen next? I actually predict that my sales are gonna go down. This was a really good year for me, almost an anomaly. And I pushed myself really hard, like too hard. And it's really taking its toll on my health. I had the goal of paying off my new car and I did. I bought my car in October 2020 and I had it completely paid off in August 2021 and I put zero down on that car. With that major accomplishment out of the way, I just kind of want to take it easy. I don't expect to do another video like this next year because my strategy is not going to change and nothing's really going to be different. I'm just probably going to sell less overall. Hopefully you found this exhaustive data breakdown helpful. If you're still here, leave me a thumbs up. And if there's something that I wasn't transparent about or something you didn't understand or want to know more about, definitely leave me a comment and I'll help clear it up. And if you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Um, chances are, if you're watching this, you're a reseller and I make nothing but reselling content. So you're going to like what you see. I hope. Now I hope you get out there, have fun and find something good.